Hi. So a problem most of us have at some point when we're doing music is difficulty maintaining the tempo. And you could even go so far as to say that people fall into one of two categories. Some of us are rushers, we tend to get faster, we rush, and others are plodders, they drag, they get slower. Maybe it's a personality thing, I don't know. I tend to be more of a rusher. I think I can drag sometimes if I'm in the wrong kind of mood. But basically, we want to neither go one way or the other. We want to be we want to be able to hit those beats exactly when we intend them to happen. So we are expressively, if you like, in control of our groove. That's not to say that we we might not intentionally want to speed up and slow down. Rubato is 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 a skill and I will talk about tempo rubato a lot more in other videos. But but when we're playing something that has a consistent tempo, there is a tendency for most of us to to go one way or the other, either get faster or to get slower. And to counter that tendency, we have to, first of all, perhaps notice it, notice which which we're doing. Are we tending to speed up or are we tending to, to slow down? And then when you've noticed that, you apply some very simple principles. And you've got, obviously then you've got to practice those principles. The principles, very simple, it's to do with what's happening between the beats. It's to do with the flow between one beat and another is a flow, a flow of time and a flow of kind of musical energy. It's the feminine part of rhythm, if you like. It's the flow, the masculine part perhaps being the attack. And you have this flow and the flow is very, very strong, very, very important. It's what really, I think, in a way carries the magic of the music. So you've got to make sure that your flow is just right, that it's, it's exactly as you want it to be. So if your flow is too urgent, as mine has a tendency to be, I'm pushing forwards. As as I'm as I'm sort of doing my groove, my beats will get closer and closer together in time. Because I'm pushing forwards, the flow doesn't have enough feeling of spacious time. <laughs> if you see what I mean, spacious time. It needs more feeling of space. It needs more feeling that there is plenty of time between the beats. However, for a plodder. The tendency is to look for more time than is really available to try and oh, perhaps they're, they're getting a bit of overthinking into it or, or whatever, but they they are you know making time in order to control the outcomes that they that they want and the beats get further and further apart. Yeah, it's kind of over cautious, hesitating. Um, it could, it could even be something with the plodding. It could even be that, that there's a sort of loss of energy, a loss of flow. So it could be like a loss of rhythm. Obviously, not having the rhythm going with a nice feeling of flow, a nice feeling. It's kind of like poetic meter groove. If you watch my video on what is groove, I explain this in a lot more detail. But, but groove is like poetic meter. It has a structure and we feel it. it's like a storytelling feeling. If you haven't got that feeling, if it's not kind of flowing through the body and the soul, the body and the soul, you have to feel it in your body, feel it from your soul. If that's not happening, then obviously you won't you won't stay in time anyway because you'll you'll just kind of play from muscle memory and karaoke sort of sense. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute because it's kind of the crux of things in a way. That, but for now, let's just let's just focus on the groove itself and make this. I want to make this point very clearly. It's a good idea to practice groove. You can do very simple things. You can just take a chord in the right hand and maybe the root of the chord in the left hand and just play a really simple pattern like this. And of course, if you want to, you can change chord. I could carry on to a different chord. So whatever your, your playing ability, and I am technically improvising, and I do advocate this. The more that, as a teacher, I always say to, to my students, use improvising. Improvising is the best way to really train your, your 
your active musician, the, the the part of you that's, I mean, I talk about fluency a lot, but even if you don't go all the way to, to the idea of musical fluency, just be more active, more expressively active. You're playing what you want to say. So I'm actually practicing my groove. So obviously you've got to notice if I start doing that, if I start doing that kind of exercise, I'll choose a different tempo and that's an important thing to say. Practice different tempos. Do slow tempos, fast tempos and all manner of tempos in between. So I'm going to do a kind of fast tempo now. Can you feel it getting faster? Now I can feel physical tension. I can definitely feel some mental tension. So it's noticing that tension that's causing it to rush. And what do you do? You relax, you feel the groove in your body. Putting a metronome on actually probably won't help. All that will do is make you feel more paranoid about your rhythm. We have a very good natural sense of rhythm. If we didn't, we wouldn't be able to walk. So we certainly wouldn't be able to walk up and downstairs. Um, we wouldn't be able to run. We wouldn't be able to do all lots of things that we naturally do that we use our sense of rhythm. So it's it's in you. This sen natural sense of regular pulses is in you. You just got to feel it and not obstruct it with your mind. So try and notice what you're doing. Am I am I listening to what I'm doing and judging it? Am I worrying it's boring? Is that why I'm going faster? That could be a culprit. That kind of thing. That's no good. You don't want to be judging your playing. You want to trust your sense of rhythm inside you. If you have the opposite tendency, especially if you start fast, you might go, you know. It's getting slower and slower because I'm, I'm tensing up. It's a similar kind of tension, slightly different because I'm trying to create time to control a result rather than driving or, or sort of, um, What's that word? Like like striving. Both are a kind of striving, aren't they? Whether he's striving in a driving way, getting faster, or striving in a controlling way and getting slower. It's striving for that result. You have to let go and trust. Which brings me to a very, very important point. Your sense of groove, your inner sense of rhythm is unique to you. You have it, as I say, otherwise you wouldn't be able to function. You have to unlock it and you have to really feel a sense of trust in it. You have to trust your groove, know your groove, feel your groove, kind of love your groove, not somebody else's groove, certainly not the groove of a met metronome because let's be honest, metronomes don't have a very good sense of groove. Your groove is not metronomic. It's got a certain give, a certain elasticity, a certain flexibility. We're not talking about playing like a metronome here. We're talking about a stable but elastic sense of structure. Listen really carefully as I do a really nice groove. See if you can hear that it isn't metronomic. The beats are not all happening metrically perfectly. And yet there's this stable sense because I'm feeling that poetic rhythm. I'm feeling that groove. So hopefully you can hear that there is some flexibility there. Not a lot, but if I try and play it perfectly like a metronome, that will cause the very tension, the same tension, the same striving tension that will make me personally speed up and might make somebody else also speed up or yet someone else slow down. So we don't want to experience that tension, so we mustn't strive to play perfectly in time. What we should aim for is this feeling of trusting our inner rhythm, our inner groove. Now this is completely different from the approach that many people have to piano playing where, where they rely on muscle memory. So what I suggest you do to destroy some of the 
the worst aspects of muscle memory. I don't like muscle memory as a principle for, for learning music anyway. I like to understand it. I'm a fluent musician. But even if, you know, as I say, you're not going all the way to fluency, to try and get rid of some of that kind of rigidity of always playing the same piece exactly the same, like, uh, 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 wind yourself up uh, uh, and go. You don't want that feeling. So to help you destroy that, that aspect of muscle memory that is destructive to good performance, Practice at different tempos. So you might be playing, I don't know, a Bach prelude. You might want to actually play it this speed. And then you might want to play at this speed. Or I might want to play at this speed. want to play this beat. So even before you can do that in a piece of music, it's probably a good idea to practice playing something simple, simple chords, even clapping and just, you know, getting your sense of rhythm really going at different tempos. You need to have a command of different tempos. Otherwise, you are going to struggle with rhythm. You are going to struggle to keep your groove stable. It's a skill. It's a skill that takes practice. It's not something that requires thought and it's not something that you can achieve through sticking a metronome on or, or, you know, or listening really carefully to see if it's in time or not. Neither of those things will help you. You've got to feel the groove from within. It's the same thing that we do when we say a child's poem in, in time, when we go, twinkle, twinkle, little star. We're saying that to a groove. We feel that. We inhibit that groove. We actually find groove a bit embarrassing sometimes because it feels kind of childlike and, and fun and jaunty. And you've got to learn to unlock that and feel your groove. If you do, you'll probably feel, if you've been struggling in this area and you manage to start to get some freedom in this area of groove, you'll probably find your playing instantly improves. And it's definitely worth working on, no matter how advanced you are, because that's what I work on every day myself. I want to have great rhythm. And the groove is the, the basis of rhythm. It's the syntax of music. It's what underpins the storytelling of music. It's what makes music make sense. So destroy that muscle memory way of playing a little bit. Do different tempos. Do some improvising, simple improvising, just playing a groove. You could do something without broken chords. You don't have to do block chords. You could do something like this. simple patterns and I'm feeling that groove, feeling it with my body, feeling it in my body, in my soul, a storytelling groovy feeling. And it's really worth practicing. And then you'll find that you don't speed up or slow down in the same way because you, you can override the mind's tendency to do that, the mind's tendency to strive. You can override it and say, no, I'm just going to feel my groove. And it will make your playing unique. It will make your playing have your style. It'll, it'll do so much for you just working on this this one thing of of playing from from within from within your own natural sense of rhythmic unfolding your own natural sense of groove